Good. I'm fine. Mr. Moore? Uh, no objection, Dr. Babson. All right. I'm fine as well. Good. The, the computer has spoken. <laughs> okay. Uh, since the minutes are, have been approved, uh, we're going to now hand it over to uh, Mr. Petiti, who's going to walk us through some agenda items. Thank you. Uh, it's great to be back in person. It's a little surreal to be here, but um, pretty nice to see everyone and I have a chance to um, do this here together. I'm um, really excited to do a quick update tonight on the progress of our website redesign. We are about seven months into this process. We, uh, the board approved our re redesign in February, and we've been working diligently since that time. Had some exciting news to share in previous meetings about the home page being finished, the design of the home page being completed. Tonight, we're going to talk about the school home pages that have been designed and approved, and the mobile responsive. Um, website that's a little bit different than our app, which we're getting a standalone app, but the uh, mobile version of our you know, the desktop uh, website has also been approved for the design. So um, let's get right into it. You may recall this picture here is the full um, homepage, is how, how it will look come uh, November to November to January is when we're hoping to launch, when we're, and we're on track to do that. And we're, we're working close with Final Site, having weekly meetings. That's the provider of our new website, we're moving from Blackboard. Um, we are um, in a good place here with keeping our stakeholders informed, um, keeping our principals in the loop on what's going on. We've had regular meetings with them to let them know where we we're going to need their help coming up here and I'll get into the, the meat of our content migration effort that's going on. Um, we also have a meeting with our PTO representatives this week um, to, to bring them to, up to speed on the project, make sure they're comfortable, they're, they're aware it's happening, but they have pages on our website that we want to make sure they feel comfortable in terms of training and managing the content there. Um, I've said this before, but our new site's only going to be really successful if it stays update, updated and current. Um, it can look nice. We're going to have new modern uh, videos and imagery and less text heavy and so it's going to be appealing visually however we want to make sure it's useful content wise and that that content is kept current so it's important for us to train up the folks that are going to be managing some elements of that uh, website when we launch in a few months as I mentioned the um, design portion is pretty buttoned up um, we're feeling really nice with where we are there um, we have interior pages to take care of and, and flesh out how the interior pages are going to look, but we're going to all kind of flow from our design of our home page, so we're in good shape. Where we are right now is uh, the content, moving all of our content from the current site to the new site. And that's going to require almost an audit that we're performing right now on the current content of the site, meaning that we have to decide what do we want to keep, what do we want to remove completely and not bring over and what do we want to modify or reorganize and then redesign when we put it onto the new site. So we're going to need the help from the principals in the schools to, to give us those answers. We're going to need help from the departments to give us those answers. There's a lot of content on our curriculum department pages, our operations page, our special education pages. We want to go through that individually with each department and ask them, hey, we've created this uh, spreadsheet for you. We want to provide them recommendations. Um, here's all your content. Here's our recommendation, whether you should keep it, whether you should remove it, whether we should modify it. And we want you to give us a yay or nay. And you can tell us why you think it should say. We'll tell you why we're recommending it to go. And then at the end of the day, we'll be able to have all the money in agreement, what comes over from the old site and what we leave behind. And that's going to help us moving forward with management of content and keep things up to date and just helping people find things easier on the site. It's going to help with search so that the website search function is not mining through, looking through as much content. So we hope for a quicker, more effective, and efficient search through that process. So that's really where we're going to be going from now until we launch is getting that content moved over. So it's a very um, intensive process that we're embarking on. The school homepage, as I mentioned, has been redesigned as well and, and signed off on. Here is, uh, it looks very similar to the, the, the district homepage, and that was intentional. We wanted to strive for consistency in the look so that as you move from school to school, 
as you visit different home pages across the district, you're going to have a similar experience. Uh, things are going to be located in the same spaces. Of course, we can update each of these pages with the logo of the school, um, uh, relevant information about where the school is located. Um, we can customize each of those content blocks to feature initiatives at the school, et cetera. But the look um, will be essentially the same across the schools. Each school is also going to have, a, as well as the home page, what we call a sticky header or what they call a sticky header, which is when you scroll, the sidebar you see there, that, that maroon sidebar, it will move to the top and follow you down the page so that you can access the main menu and other quick links wherever you are on that page and don't have to scroll all the way back to the top to, re to, to uh, locate those uh, icons. Next slide here is our mobile design. This is going to be a, a um, market difference from our current experience. I mean, the entire site will desktop or mobile, but here you're really going to see um, the impact of a redesign. Um, that first big image on your far left is what would appear on your phone when you pull up the website. You'll have the ability to tap that quick links number two, and that will pop out and you'll see that uh, window appear where you'll have quick access to those elements or icons we can switch out and change uh, depending upon you know, what's most visited, or most in demand. That number three is what they call a hamburger menu, and that will also expand upon tapping and um, give you that maroon, that full maroon box at the lower uh, center where you'll be able to go through all the menu items clearly, um, clearly distinguished and marked so you won't have to kind of kind of guess, which is a little bit guessing going on with our current mobile responsive version. Pretty neat here on the right top right where you see the date and event listings, you'll be able to swipe left and swipe through um, on your phone through the dates, through the events coming up without having to click into a the full calendar and get at a glance the time, date, location, and a description of what's happening on that day around the district. And then we have some photos rounding out the design at the bottom where we can take people to some maybe larger initiatives, larger stories, and feature our students and staff um, more broadly. That is the uh, quick rundown of current design phase and status. We've moved through it, and um, again, like I said, mentioned we're on content migration now, and I'm happy to, before we move on to the next agenda item, answer questions. Sure, just a quick question. So the production phase set to begin very soon. So, and then how long will that, what, what's the ge kind of a general timeline? So they'll be building the site as we move the content, and our, our, we're still on track for launch end of November, mm -hmm or by January. So if we need that extra time because mm. um, of content moving oh, yeah. things over, you know, we run into whatever, you know, roadblocks, who knows, we have a little bit extra time. And our, our goal though, and we want to hit launch new year mm -hmm. for certain. So when people come back, the new year, let's see a new website, new look. It's exciting. Yeah. Great. And what, what's the, uh, this, the app will follow? Any sense of uh, the goal there? The some, app is going to be more mostly a fall. I, we, oh. we should have the app around the same time. Same um, time. Yes, okay. the, the app is a separate kind of track that gets designed uh, in the fall going into the same. winter time. Okay. And we hope to be able to have it in the App Store um, to yeah. download by launch. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Thank Looks you. really, really good. And it's exciting. Needed. Exciting. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> it's a lot of work. A lot of work. It's been really, mm. it's been great. It's been a fun glad project to, hear that. to take on, and I, I we're think glad we're to all going to, the community, hopefully, and the students and staff really would appreciate the end result. So, Mr. Moore? No questions. Thank you for the update. <laughs> really appreciate I always forget, it. like, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great. So, we we'll move for that. on, if it's okay, to the next agenda item here, which is an update on our logo design process for the new Matter Middle School or Matter High School mascot, the Raptors. And what I thought we would do to give us all kind of an, a taste of the 
VIP branding firm that has come on for the project that we've, that we've come to agreement with. There are subsidiary of Varsity Brands. Let's take a look at a 15 second, second video that shows some of the designs they've, they've come up with for other schools and gets, gets us a little hype for the, for the process. So let me just play this real quick. That would be a nice way to set the stage here for uh, where our project is now and um, the work and the um, excitement, oops, excuse me, excitement around this process. They've been very responsive, very quick to um, you know, get our feedback and deliver us some other sketches. So I'll tell you how we got to where we are now, going over some uh, quick history. So. As I mentioned, it's underway. We had an introductory meeting with VIP on, in early July. We will receive one logo and six word marks, and I'll show you a sample of that package in the next slide. Um, we had a branding questionnaire that we completed as an administrative team and submitted to Varsity in mid-July. That helped them get inspired for the first initial round of sketches. And a graphic designer was assigned to us in mid-July, and we collaborated as an uh, administrative team on that around that same time to map out a process for this with a goal of having a logo in place for use by the start of the school year. We received preliminary sketches in late July, and then we reviewed those sketches and provided feedback before the end of July. And we pulled together some representatives from student government and, and RHF athletics, and we sat down to go over the process with them and to receive their feedback. Uh, no logos at that time or sketches were shown to the students. We were just getting their ideas and their thoughts around the imagery and what they might like to see. We provided more feedback based upon that conversation, and we expect a, another round of logo sketches this week. We've whittled some things down, and we're at a good place. Um, so once we get those, we'll be able to take it to the next level, reduce them to hopefully three options, and then receive some more feedback from our student group, complete the logo, and then um, we'll get a brand guide and brand locker, which I'll show you right now. But once we get the, the logo, um, we'll be able to also utilize the brand guide, which is the bottom left, which allows us to get our distinguished uh, or distinct colors, fonts, um, approved, uh, the actual approved logos, as well as the locker, which allows us to access all the files we're going to need to share out. So a JPEG file, a PNG file, certain vector files that allow you to expand the logo as large as you like or to make it as small as you'd like. And then we'll be able to use those resources to establish a process for those that want to use the logo um, so that we can make, ensure they have the proper imagery, they have the proper font uh, set, they have the proper color um, configurations so that our, we, remain cons we have consistency in logo usage and requests for the logo. I mentioned a, a sample of a logo in six word marks. That's what you see at the top for Cypress Park. If you, if you think of the mascot logo as the tiger, um, that would then be, you'd be able to also get letters uh, represented, so the R would be able to be stylized, as well as a standalone uh, Paul type image, and then the font will be used for the schools, and as you can't see it, but it says athletics underneath Cypress Park, and so you can change to athletics, you can change to football, um, et cetera. So we will get, in total, seven distinct images that we could use various ways. So that is, again, just an overview of where we are right now and 
again, we have every intention and, and goal to have it in place for the start of the year. Happy to talk, answer questions. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Dr. Babson. I'm all right for now. Good. Mr. Um, Jubilee. Now it's on. Um, I just want to be clear. It sounds like at the end of the process we get a logo, but there are iterations that you're working through now to whittle it down. Because it's, it's, I just want to be clear, like you're going through that process now, um, giving feedback. So you're seeing more than, it's not like, here's your logo, take it or leave it. Yeah. But by that point, it'll already been, you'll be working on drafts, revisions, Exactly. We, we have uh, provided some, through that branding questionnaire, some themes, some thoughts around what that the raptor bird of prey might look like. And then we received various interpretations of that bird of prey. And we we're whittling down that, that look to a point where we can have three options to choose from and have the students look at and say, we like, for example, a front-facing raptor that with wings out, talons forward. Oh, actually, we know we like the side profile just ahead with the talon maybe raised. Um, so different, all the same type of looking bird, um, but just different positions. And then the students will be able to tell us, go with option A, and then we'll take that, and that will be the inspiration for the other uh, word marks. The R is, is being also kind of worked on in a, a similar track. Um, we're, ha we're having them t pay good attention to the R. We want to keep some of the, the slash look. We want to keep some of the things that we've been using for traditionally around that, that look, but maybe just bring some of that um, sharpness into it, that, 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 the feeling of sharpness that you think of when you hear a raptor or a bird of prey, bring some of that edginess into the R. Um, so we're having them work up some R examples too. And because of the timing, it, how will um, the fall sort of sports season, if you will, be impacted? Um, my understanding, if my memory serves me correctly, was that a lot of it, a lot of the uniforms are still, say Radnor, mm -hmm. and it's perfectly fine and, yep. and they're nice. Um, you'll continue through that cycle and have a sort of a, um, a natural transition? Yeah, so it's, we, we won't be having the name Raptors on yeah. much many uniforms, if any. Right. Um, especially going into the year or potentially even the, the yeah. entire year. Um, we have to first create the logo before we can print it on materials, um, before we can get it, you know, put on T-shirts and flags signage. And signage. So we we don't anticipate again having a, the logo in place until the end of the year. I mean, excuse me, the beginning of the school year. Yeah. So obviously you want to be able to take it and put it places before the beginning of the school year because it want to be printable because it's not finalized. Yeah. So yeah, we've been looking at the jerseys, what needs to be transitioned from the past nickname to just Radner. Right. And Mr. Friel's been done an excellent job yeah. um, pinpointing that. And we talked about before um, which were, what jerseys were already in the cycle, so what uniforms were already up for that. And these, those uniforms that were, were put, had Radner placed on them. I know he's looking at the helmets for the football team and that addressing um, what will go on the side of the helmet when they're refurbished. So um, yes, that's that's on, it's a similar, I mean, that's, a, that's part of this project, not the logo design part, but the phasing out of the previous nickname. As you said, Mr. Jubilee, I mean, we discovered as we talked about in June, a lot of things just said Radner. Yeah, so <laughs> almost all right. So we're 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 not looking to change mm -hmm. that, or, and and um, you know, so it, in some ways that makes the transition easy when those things that we identified were already identified as Radner. Um, so it it is a uh, you know the process continues as we move forward, but uh, at many of the areas you know things that were Radner will continue as Radner. The color palette remains. The colors are maroon and white. That will remain. Yep, absolutely. That will remain. Yep. Yeah. Should be a, it sounds like a pretty seamless transition. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's the word I'd use. Uh, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to set the. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're we're confident that the process we're following is going to be um, effective, and and we're going to reach an end goal that we're all proud of. So, 
um, we're going to stay on that path. And um, everybody's been working along great with the admin team and with students and their feedback. And so you have some students with, from student government and some who participate in the interscholastic athletic teams. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So again, Mr. Friel's been great with reaching He's out sort to some of, of the shepherded that. or other okay. other sports captains and representatives yeah. and inviting them in to share out. Now we did only we had one call with them, but we have others planned as we get the other iterations that come through from the firm. Okay. I think this is on. Yeah. Um, you know, all kidding aside, you know, my kids go to uh, summer camp at the Y, and they have a Raptor area. And uh, so I was kind of showing them, and I was asking them, you know, which which one would you like to see? You know, it's it's kind of neat. So I mean, they're they're I'm kind of curious, and and uh, should be really really neat to see what what actually comes up from the decision making process. Yeah, we would like a reveal. We would like to try to do a reveal. Uh, okay. So that's that was my question. Why we're we're trying to hold off on. Um, showing any middle ground stages here and just so we can yeah. come out and celebrate what, yeah. what, what flies, you know, what comes from it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Excellent. Well, this is good. Actually, I did have one quick question about this uh, branding guide. Mm -hmm. So will, will our logo, will it have a similar kind of style? So here with these examples and then also in the video, there's a certain style to how VIP brands kind of does. It, it looks like there's a kind of style. Mm -hmm. So is it safe to assume that ours will kind of have a similar style to, you know, the, the logos that they have? In terms of, um, you know, it's like the, the, the kind of, um, uh, there's like a blend of, of cartoon and realism there. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it's safe to assume that that our kind of brand guide will kind of have the same style as the example here. It's not going to be that that too far off the mark. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, it's hard to answer. Um, I know what you mean by some of those thicker uh, strokes that they have in their, in their um, logos. And, right. Um, if you notice, it's interesting in the Cypress Park when you're seeing here, if you look closely at the tiger head, you see CP in the actual fur of the, in black, in the head. Oh, cool. So they, <laughs> they do try to incorporate some elements that make it unique to the, to the uh, school that's um, they're designing. And they also give you a, a trademark on it, so it's okay. helpful to be able to have that, you know, in place. Hark harkens back a little bit to our social media policy, uh, uh, policy meeting conversation around being able to some teeth around the, the, the distribution of that logo. Um, we've had a wide range of examples that they've showed us. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that they all kind of have that same vein, mm -hmm. um, but there are certainly ones that you can look at and say, oh, I see where, you know, why they all kind of have that, that vibe. Um, yeah. Yeah. But you can also see other ones where they look more um, one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. It's really a up to the kind of aesthetic that you're going for. Sure, um, and, and it's good to be able to give give um, the the committee a, a choice, you know, to present them with a bunch of different options and see what they come up with. So, great. I think that's it for that topic. Yeah. Great. great. Thanks. So. If we move on to the government relations side of things, switching gears a little bit here, um, really just an inf informational couple slide or an informational couple items, um, as we typically do with our, our meetings here. We have a legislative update, and on the screen and in the agenda item attached is the most recent update from the Delaware County Intermediate Unit. We make this available to the public for convenience and ease of access, so I invite all interested community members to check it out. Quickly, you'll note two charter school-related proposals at the pages one, excuse me, two and three, House Bills 1666 and 1707. One requires, would require charter schools that took paycheck protection program loans through the CARES Act to reimburse the Commonwealth, and the other prohibits would prohibit any member of the PA General Assembly from owning a charter school or being a board member of a charter school. 
on page 4, HB 1715 seeks to clarify that the minimum number of school days required per year remains at 180 unless in emergency circumstances following a district application. Note that in this proposed bill, school days where virtual instruction is provided would count toward the 180. So there's a couple other uh, items in here. Vaccine passports, um, Senate Bill 618 that would prohibit government entities from requiring proof of COVID vaccinations. That um, was vetoed, uh, looks like, um, by the governor July 3rd, but here on the DCIU uh, legislative update included, so I wanted to point that out. Again, you can read through this entire document on our board docs webpage under our meeting. Any thoughts, um, anything on that that you want to particularly discuss or stands out to you? Mr. Moore, over to you. Yes, when I was reviewing my packet, I, I did take note of that PPP uh, loan reimbursement provision. I thought that was interesting. I do remember there was some controversy about charter schools that had applied for those PPP loans. Um, you know, that, that may have been technically compliant, but if, if you think of the core of what that loan program was designed to do, you think about, you know, small businesses that were struggling in the community um, due to COVID restrictions um, and, and people, you know, not going out and, you know, consuming products and enjoying entertainment the way they used to. So, um, you know, charter schools are part of our educational system here in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, I, I used to teach at a charter school, but, you know, nonetheless, I think there was a lot of controversy about that. So it'll be interesting to see what the discussion of that particular item is like. Um, I do I do wonder how much the, the Commonwealth has the ability to uh, require charter schools to reimburse the Commonwealth. I don't know how much, you know, you know that's something that the federal government would have to assent to as well. But uh, that's certainly one I'll be following. Thank you. I don't, I can't tell, from, there we go. Yeah, it, it's, I would just uh, echo that um, everything, unfortunately, in my opinion, is <clears throat> viewed through a very partisan lens right now. Um, and I don't see a lot getting done, period, um, regardless of uh, its merits or where it, if it was sponsored by a Republican or a Democrat with a Democratic governor and a Republican-led um, majority in the House and the Senate, it seems like things just get stymied. If uh, the Republicans pass something, the governor has vetoed it vis-a-vis -vis a potential ban on vaccine passports and charter reform, which we've talked about incessantly, of course, and will continue to, um, not yet seeing sort of the finish line um, due to, um, you know, it unfortunately sort of becoming a Republican-Democrat, not always, but Republican-Democrat um, battle. Um, so it's that's that's not anything. You know, it's just more like my little pontification, if nothing else. Um, but um, it doesn't seem, per this brief, that anything is sort of too hot. Um, but I do think we'll continue to see some of the cultural type of things we're seeing at our local and our school board um, be debated and or tried to act act tried through legislative actions. Um, we've seen something that we need to look at very closely. Um, that uh, just in, if not today or yesterday, a proposal by two Republican members of the Senate to ban local school districts from requiring masks. Um, that will be followed very closely. The governor already said he'd veto it. So it makes a lot of news, but I don't think that a lot of these things that sort of rise to the top of the news uh, peg, news cycle, um, necessarily are valid to have an opportunity to be um, put into law. Thanks for that. I, I don't have any um, insightful comments like you've already heard. <laughs> um, I, I just I just can't uh, help but think just the number of bills and, and legislation, respective legislation that's in the mix that is so relevant to us here. Um, all of these issues and, and items could be expounded upon as, as relevant to us right here. So. It's part of what we try to do here in this committee is try to show the relevance of what's going on in Harrisburg or in D.C. Um, to, to what's happening right here. So really appreciate 
you putting this uh, on the agenda, Michael, and, and walking through some of these issues. I mean, there's even some stuff from the previous brief that would be uh, kind of piquing my interest. We didn't have uh, we didn't have a meeting last month, obviously. But. And I know Mr. Petiti has shared in the past, and I don't remember it off the top of my head, but you know. Um, as we've discussed before, how many things never even, you know, there's a long laundry list of bills and things and nothing ever happens with, with many of them. And, and there's, there's a lot of reasons and motives behind different bills and sometimes there's intentions for it never to, to go any further. So, um, you know, the, the, we could spend a lot of time sometimes discussing a lot of them and the reality is, is, you know, the, 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 the amount that we often bring here, um, I forget, you shared it a couple of years ago, the percentage, um, and it was striking. It's a small percentage. It's a very small. You're being kind. You, you, yes. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, was, I was reading something recently about um, some bills going around Congress, and I learned something new, uh, that there are bills that are, that are put together just as a form of messaging mm -hmm. uh, or as a set of steps towards something else. Um, so I, I think One other quick point, just to, in, to echo Dr. Batchelor's comment, is now you're seeing a, because again, you have a Democratic governor, if you may recall that um, an amendment, a constitutional amendment passed in the last election cycle that uh, and sort of inhibited the governor from exercising his emergency powers. That's relevant to us, especially it relates to health and safety. Um, and the governor has been a little bit more reticent, at least this is my opinion on um, maybe, f you know, whether it be any mandates at this point around COVID, uh, further mandates, I should say, or, or emergency actions. What you're seeing, though, I think it's important for all of us and, 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 and our school community is sometimes you're seeing an end around. You might see some, okay, we're not going to get Governor Wolf at this time to sign something, so we're going to try to put it on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Just a very interesting insight that um, is, depending on your point of view, is um, opportunity or a real threat. Very insightful, thank you. And you know, this comes from some experience that you've had in, in Harrisburg, and you know, some of your your knowledge of, of how things work. And That's why I like being on GRCC. <laughs> you heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you very much. So, how are we doing with our agenda? Is that right? Yes, that's our last item, and it should be a quick one, Pennsylvania School Boards Association upcoming events. Uh, just letting everyone know that in September 27th to 29th is when the PASA and PSBA Leadership Conference will take place. On the 27th, we'll also be having, they'll also be having the Equity Summit, Developing Systems of Equity for a New Generation. On the 27th, we'll also be hosting a Start Strong developing a district onboarding plan for new directors and a school law workshop in October, a virtual fall advocacy day on the 14th, and a delegate assembly meeting on the 23rd. So just putting it on the radar of the board, and many of you are already aware of those events, but also the public, um, letting them know what the state school boards association is hosting. And uh, Mr. Moore, do you have anything to add as liaison to PSBA? Uh, thank you, Dr. Babson. Um, I'd be remiss not to mention an opportunity for my fellow school board directors, and I may bring this up in the business meeting as well. Now, when COVID hit, the um, PSBA um, set up uh, some new opportunities for collaboration and networking among school directors. Um, and one of those is something called the monthly exchange. Um, and any school director who's a member of PSBA is eligible to participate in that. Uh, if you look at your PSBA newsletters, there's a, there's a link to register for that. And what the way PSBA typically handles that is they will present um, some information on a topic. I believe this month's topic was um, legal issues around COVID mitigation members, me measures, which, you know, is perhaps not surprising they selected that topic. Um, and so PSBA will pr present information to the school directors who are attending. And then what happens for the, the second half of the, the hour, uh, this, this kind of meeting typically happens at the lunch hour, is there will be breakout rooms that are by PSBA section. So our section, Section 8, is in southeastern Pennsylvania. 
and there's an opportunity just to talk about the topic or whatever else is coming up in, in school board meetings to hear how um, other school boards are handling, you know, perhaps analogous issues uh, that come before them. You know, I've uh, participated in some of these sessions, um, and I think some other school board members have frequented them as well. Uh, Ms. Stern, uh, Mrs. Goldman, uh, Mrs. Monahan, and you know, perhaps you know that's an invitation that other school members, school board members, would like to take advantage of. So um, that's worth mentioning as well as a PSBA activity, um, not one available to the public, but one that provides us the opportunity to really learn what is going on in other districts so that we can make sure that we're learning from um, all of the districts around us and being the best that we can be. Excellent. Thank you. I have to say, nodding at, looking over and nodding at the microphone, it's just <laughs> not quite the same, I have to say. Uh, <laughs> You've never looked better, Mr. Moore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Excellent. I've got I think... a face for radio, Mr. Jubilee. <laughs> All right. Any new business? Okay, we got a hard no on that one. Uh, public comment. No? Okay. Well. That is it. Thanks very much.